and welcome back. In this video, we're talking about slope-intercept form of a line. So if we have a linear function and it's written in slope-intercept form, it looks like the following. So if our function is f, we have f of x is equal to mx plus b. So here we have m that represents our slope, it's some constant value, it's being multiplied by our input x, and then we have a plus b, which represents the vertical intercept. So if we have y equals f of x, this will look like y equals mx plus b. So this is our form of a linear function, and we just want to do some examples with this with both the equations and the graphs. So first, let's write a function h that has a slope negative 2 and a vertical intercept 5. So here we're starting with h of x is equal to mx plus b, and we just need to fill in the relevant information. We were given a slope and the vertical intercept, so we actually have everything we need. Our slope is the m value, so that's negative 2, and the vertical intercept is 5, so we have a plus 5. And it's as simple as that. So h of x is equal to negative 2x plus 5. Now, if we wanted to graph this function when it's written in slope-intercept form, my recommendation is to start with the vertical intercept. So we start by graphing that point at 0, 5, and then we're going to use the slope to graph some other points to help us out. So our slope here is negative 2. And we need to represent this as a change in output over the change in input. And so what I'm going to do is write this as negative 2 over 1. So anytime we divide by 1 in a fraction, it leaves the number the same. So negative 2 is then my change in y, or my change in output. And then 1 is my change in input. So starting at our point 5, I can do a vertical change of negative 2, and then a horizontal change of positive 1. So that's a down 2, right 1. And then I just repeat this. So I go down two, right one, down two, right one, etc. And then I can also go in the other direction by doing the opposite. So I do left one, up two. And there we go. We have enough points now, we can draw the line. You really only need two points to draw a line, but I've just drawn a bunch here just for my own sake if I'm drawing this by hand. All right, let's try another example that is a little more involved. Let's write a linear function k that has vertical intercept 1 going through the points negative 1, 2, and 4, negative 3. Okay, so we're going to use slope-intercept form, and this is specifically useful since we were given the intercept. So we're starting with k of x equals mx plus b, and I'm just going to be able to already put in 1 for my b, since 1 is that vertical intercept. And now we just need to find our slope. So we can find the slope using the points we were given. We have two points, that's enough for us to find the slope. So m, our slope, we can find by doing the change in y, y2 minus y1, over the change in x, x2 minus x1. And that's if we label one of the points as x1, y1, and the other point as x2, y2. So I'm going to let negative 1, 2 be x1, y1, and 4, negative 3 as x2, y2. And now we just fill in the information in the correct locations. So y2 minus y1 is negative 3 minus 2, and then that gets divided by x2 minus x1, so 4 minus a negative 1. Now I just need to simplify. So negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5, and then that's divided by 4 plus 1. So 4 plus 1 is 5, and I have negative 5 over 5, which simplifies to negative 1. So here, my slope is negative 1, and I just need to put this in the formula. So now I can replace m with my slope, and so I have k of x is equal to negative 1 times x plus 1. Now I'm just going to do one more thing. Typically what we do is if we have a negative 1 multiplied by our variable, we just like to put it as a negative. So I'm going to write our final answer as k of x equals negative x plus 1. All right, so let's graph this really quickly. So we're going to start first with our vertical intercept. So I know that I have this point at 0, 1. Now I'll use the slope to help me graph another point. 
I'm actually going to graph quite a few points just to help me out here, but you really only need two points to define a line. So our slope or our m value is negative one. And in order to interpret this as a change in y over change in x, I'm going to write it as negative one divided by one. So negative one is my change in y, my vertical change, and one is my horizontal change, my change in x. So from our point, we're going to go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one, etc. And we can graph these other points. Or we could go in the opposite direction. So we could go to the left by going left one, up one, left one, up one. So we're just doing that pattern sort of backward in the other direction. And there we go. That's our line. So start with that vertical intercept and then use the slope as a fraction in order to help you graph some other points where you do the change in output over the change in input. All right, lastly, I'm going to give us some graphs and we're gonna write their formulas in slope intercept form. So let's write the formula for each function. And here are our three graphs. We have F, G, and H. So we'll do these one at a time. Let's start with F. So our layout using slope intercept form will be f of x equals mx plus b. So I like to start with my b. So I see that negative two is that vertical intercept. And so I replace my b value with negative two. So I have mx plus a negative two. Now we just need to find our slope. So slope is the change in output over the change in input or the change in y over the change in x. So to do this effectively, I'm going to identify some other points that I can pretty clearly see what the values are. So I'm seeing a point at three, two, and at six, six. So the other points in between are a little harder for me to quantify. So I like to just get the exact points that are clear to me. Then we wanna find the change in output and the change in input between these points. So I'm looking at how far do we go up and then how far do we go over between each of them as we go from left to right. So I'm seeing that this is a vertical change of four. So we go up four, that's our delta y. And then we do to the right, so our delta x is three. So we're gonna have four over three as our slope. So up four to the right three. And there we go. So our slope is four thirds and we can replace this as m in our equation. So I have four thirds x plus a negative two. And I just don't really like the plus a negative two, so I'm gonna rewrite this as four thirds x minus two. And there we go. All right, let's repeat this process with our second graph. So here's the graph of G. This will have the form mx plus b. So here I can clearly see the vertical intercept is one, meaning my b value is one. I'll just substitute that in here. And now I need to find m, my slope. So I'll choose again some points that are clear to me. I'm seeing that we have negative one, four, one, negative two, and two, negative five. Those ones I can pretty clearly draw. And we just wanna find the change in output and the change in input between these points. So I'm seeing that we go down three, so that's a delta y of negative three, and then to the right by one, that's a delta x of one. So negative three divided by one, which simplifies to just be negative three. So down three to the right one, down three to the right one, that's a slope of negative three over one, which is negative three. And there we go. We substitute that in for m and I get my final answer, which is g of x is equal to negative three x plus one. All right, one more graph left. So here is the graph of h. I'm going to start with my vertical intercept again. I see that I intersect at y equals zero. So that zero, zero is my vertical intercept. Also happens to be my horizontal intercept, but that's fine. So my b value is going to be zero. So when I have h of x equals mx plus b, I'll replace b and have it be zero. All right, now we just need to find the slope. I'll pick some other points that are pretty easy to identify. I think most of them are here. So I have one, one, two, two negative one, negative one, negative two, negative two. You can pick lots of different ones. And I just wanna look at the change in y and the change in x between these points. So I'm noticing that we go up one to the right one, meaning our delta y is one and our delta x is also one. So this is the fraction one over one, which just simplifies to one. 
So I'd say my slope is one. Now my answer I have written here is h of x is equal to one x plus zero, but we actually really like to simplify this to have it look even easier. So I like to just write this as h of x equals x. So the one times x is just x, and then the plus zero we don't need to write, it has no effect. So h of x equals x, which you might also see written as y equals x, that's this line here. All right, and there we go. Those are our three equations that we got for our graphs. That's a little introduction into slope-intercept form. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.